If your Panasonic Plasma is experiencing a 7 blink, 14 blink error code, or if you just heard a really loud pop just like this, Jesus. Then stick around, we'll show you how to fix it. I'm gonna show you how to fix this SC board, which is experiencing a seven blink error code. This is from a Panasonic Plasma with model number TC-P60VT60. Now I'm not actually gonna plug it into the TV to show you it uh, malfunctioning because I've already found some damage on it and I'd wanna avoid damaging other parts in the TV, but we will live test it post repair. So first let's take a closer look under the microscope. This is the part in question. It is diode D421 and I'm Obviously, you can see the top here is actually broken off. It's lifted off of the board, and it's obviously not supposed to. So this is a damaged diode, which we'll need to replace. Now, to give you a better idea of where it is on the board, it is right over here. Now we have two of these and the other one is right over here. So the reason I say there are two of them is because they are in parallel. So if one goes out, usually both have to be replaced. So we'll do another check once they have been replaced and the shorts are gone to show that they are in fact in parallel. But the idea is if one goes out, usually you do want to replace both. One thing I do want to mention is this board has actually already been fixed. I did notice that there are some solder joints that are new and looking more into it, I realized this is actually a warranty. So we have actually fixed this board in the past. This has been sent back for warranty because it failed again. So this is a second repair. Now I'm assuming that these guys over here were not failed the first time around, um, just based off the fact that it does look like it's all original solder. But we're gonna do some further checks and discover what else could be going on. Now, one more thing before we do flip the board to the backside, I did find additional damage on some of the components on the top. So looking at Q601 over here, we have a resistor to the left that is failed open. So let's see, it says 100 kilo ohms. When I'm comparing it to a good board, this is the board from our TV, I get 47 ohms. So this is a 47 ohm resistor. I mean, obviously you can see here it is burnt up. It is defective, will need to be replaced. I think that's just some dust. Let's see, this resistor over here looks pretty rough. We're obviously gonna have to replace that. Okay, so taking another look at the back of the board, we can see this one has had new solder. So this is one of the components that was replaced in the past. Let's take a look here. And we are getting 2.9 ohms. So that is shorted. Since this one is in parallel with these two, we should also be seeing some shorts on these two as well. Okay, I'm probably just not making good contact here. There we go, 3.2, 21 ohms. All right, we don't need to test that one. Let's see these diodes over here, 58 kilo ohms. Again, these are all in parallel, so we don't need to check all of them, just one of them. And then we have these transistors over here, and they were also replaced, and we're getting a short, 0 0.4 ohms. So these three will need to be replaced again. But this one over here, Q601, this is the one where the resistors were blown on the front. So 1.57 mega ohms. All right, and we have 0 0.4 ohms, and this is Q601, which was the one with the transistor, or sorry, the resistor on the front that was blown. Now there is actually one more component that I wanna check, and it is on the front side. It is all the way down here. So same thing, we'll do a resistance check, and we're getting about 75 kilo ohms, and 83 on the other leg. Okay, so I would say this one is okay. To begin the repair, what I'm going to start with is the surface mount components. So we're gonna replace the two resistors next to that Q601, as well as the two diodes over here. So this is our 47 ohm resistor. We'll go ahead and desolder that one first. We'll go ahead and desolder this one over here, which I believe is a one or 10 ohm resistor. There we go. Do a quick little clean. So I, I wanna be thorough on my clean because I also wanna make sure there isn't any damage to the board. Sometimes when components burn up like that, they can actually damage the board and the traces on the board will be burnt up. But it doesn't look like that's the case here. I do have a tiny little bit of delamination right there and a little bit right there, but I don't think that's enough to really matter. I'm just gonna put a little dot of solder on one side, and I'm gonna melt that solder as I slide in the resistor. And I did confirm this one is a one RO, so one ohm resistor.
Perfect. Now let's go to our diodes. And for the installation, I actually switched tips to a larger one, just because this is a fairly large pad. And I'm just preheating it a little bit, and then we're gonna slide in our diode. Now for this one, we're gonna try a little bit of a different technique. I am gonna add a little bit of solder here first. But then I'm also going to use my hot air. And the reason I didn't do it the first time on the, uh, the first diode is because it was broken. So it was easier to just get the two small pins. This one has all three of them, the big large pad and the smaller pins still attached. So it's gonna be a little harder to remove. There we go. And then for our replacement, I'm just gonna put it on there. We'll start heating everything up. The board is still a little bit hot, so hopefully it won't take very long to melt. Yep, and we're already getting there. All right, and it's not perfect, but that's okay. As long as the solder is properly connected to the pad, We'll just add a little bit extra so we get good flow there. And that looks perfect. All right, let's go ahead and tackle Q601 next. So we're gonna remove it. Technically, I can just use my drill on this one. And I'm gonna use my desolder pump. Try and desolder the legs best I can. Now, some of these legs are easier to desolder than others. Some like this one, I fear I'm not gonna get. Oh, decent job. The reason I say that is because some of them are on very large pads and it's very hard to desolder them. And let's finish it off with the desolder braid here. Okay, now we should be able to wiggle it out. There we go. And let's see, what does it say? R5005. All right, this is our replacement transistor. So this is an end channel and it is a little different, but they are both rated at 500 volts, five amps and channel MOSFETs. And I'm going to clean off with a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol, some of the original thermal paste. Okay, and that's too much, of course, but better too much than not enough. Go ahead and feed the replacement transistor in. All right, that looks very pretty. Now we're gonna do the same to these transistors that were shorted over here. So this one is a diode, D401. We are looking for the transistors, which start with the letter Q. So we're supposed to skip that one and go to these two instead. That one was very clean. Nice. Oh, actually, so I'm realizing why these are much easier and coming out very clean is because we had already soldered them in the past. Usually original solder is a little bit more difficult to work with. The three transistors we were desoldering are this one, this one, and this one over here. They are labeled, let's see, RJP30Y2A. Now these are in a very tight spot with all these heat sinks, so we have to use one of these guys, which is kind of a pain. All right, so we're gonna just do this off screen because obviously I cannot do this on screen while showing you. And this is also gonna take forever. Put our new transistors in. Yeah, we're gonna do this part off screen as well because it's gonna take me a while to get it. All right, our transistors are in. We can go ahead and solder down the pins. Yeah. 
And finally, we have the Q421, Q422, and Q423, which are the 30F125s that we need to replace that were also shorted. You already have a pretty good idea of what the process is, so we'll do those off screen, and then we'll come back once they're replaced, and we'll do some multimeter checks to make sure all the shorts are gone. All right, we finished the installation of the last three transistors, so we're back with the multimeter on the back side of the board. So these were shorted over here, and we are now getting 62 kilo ohms, 195 kilo ohms. So again, since these three are all in parallel, if I measure one, I've technically measured all three. Now these are ones we just replaced. These were also shorted. So now we're at 66 kilo ohms, 207. And then we had our Q601 down here that was shorted. And we're not getting anything here open and 64 kilo ohms. And then let's just do a quick recheck of our diode over here. And that one is 63 kilo ohms. All right, so even though all of our shorts are gone, I want to do one more thing, and it's these three transistors on the back. They have not yet been replaced, and we were getting about 55 kilo ohms on them. Now, in my how to fix guide that I have in my notes, it does tell me that I should replace these, especially if these guys go out or these two diodes. They have some traces that are in parallel with it, one another. They're not actually fully in parallel, but some of the traces are shared and those readings are a little bit lower than what I'm expecting. So just to be safe, we're gonna go ahead and replace those three and then we'll do the, our, our live testing. So I was actually doing some final checks and I did find one more shorted component, which is this diode over here and it's labeled D618 and we are getting a dead short, 0.3 ohms. So we are gonna have to replace it. And I believe after that, we're all done. I did check the rest of the board. I did not find anything else wrong with the board. So this should be it. Okay, and then just to confirm with the diode out of circuit when we're rechecking it, we are still getting 0 0.1 ohms and the circuit itself is no longer shorted. And I do have a donor diode. All right, and we're gonna do just one final check. And now we get 780 kilo ohms or, oh, or 0 0.8 mega ohms, so 800 kilo ohms. Now we can finally do our live test. All right, so this is our test TV and we have our SC board plugged in. Let's go ahead and power up the set. Now we're supposed to get a green light right here, which we are getting. And let's see our fans, our fans are spinning. Let's take a peek here and we do have picture on screen, wonderful. Now the only thing is, that is not the board we fixed, this is. And as you can tell, that Q601 transistor did short out, the resistor next to it burnt up again. So unfortunately, we did not have a successful repair. Now, as I mentioned in the video earlier, this was actually a warranty repair. We had fixed the board in the past. We had good success. Life tested it properly in our test set. And when the customer got it back, the issue reoccurred seven blinks again. So this time around, they actually sent it in with both their SC board, their buffer boards, their main board, their SS board, and the power supply. Now, when live testing all of their parts, we did notice that their buffer boards and SC board were defective in addition to the main board. So all three of those boards did actually become defective simultaneously. If you know why that could happen, let us know in the comments down below. I do suspect they most likely have a bad panel, which is why it triggered all three of those boards to simultaneously fail. It's possible there could be physical damage to the panel, such as a crack or simply a shorted panel, which could be causing this fault. At this point, we are gonna have to call this SC board a no fix. However, if you have a defective SC board, the repairs that we did perform are correct. They should fix 99% of the SC board problems. If you like the content, if you like the video, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.